In this episode, we dive deep into the art of building trust on a cold call. We challenge the conventional sales approach and discuss how to create genuine connections without pressure. You'll learn why traditional techniques like follow-ups and pushing for the next step might be killing your deals and how shifting your mindset can lead to deeper conversations, higher conversion rates, and a one-call close. So say you're cold calling somebody sure. and you don't have the decision maker, sure. uh, you don't have their information, you don't even know who it is yet. You're tr just trying to get to that person. How do you establish trust to somebody who doesn't even have that problem? Yeah. So how do you establish trust on a cold call? Yeah. So here's how it goes. Okay. The typical way is like this. Hi, my name is, I'm with, we are a, how are you today? Or do you have a couple minutes? That's that. When you say that to someone with a typical sales approach, it's over and hello. It's over right there because they associate you immediately with the stereotype. You sh you've, it's, no, that's why it's so painful. Here's how we handle a call like that with our mindset, and our language. And it goes like this. So let's say the guy picks the phone and says, his name's Scott. Hi, Scott. My name's Ari, and I'm hoping you can help me out for a moment. And you're going to ask, what? What can I do? <laughs> like, now, now I'm triggered to say, like, what? what? Of course, that's called a two-way dialogue and hello. That's how you create a connection. Because they are gonna they don't know who you are. You could be the president. You could be the, uh, the tax op. You could be a client. They Human nature, when you ask for help, is to say, how can I help you? As long as you deliver it with that tonality and that relaxed and calmness. If you say, hi, I'm hoping you can help me out for a moment, you're dead. Cut the energy out. Remove the pressure. Remove momentum from your sales process. Is that the secret? Is that is That, that seems to be like a, a theme you're coming back to. Remove the momentum. Well, one of our core principles is the idea of always removing pressure from the process and pressure is created by us that inadvertently puts momentum on them to move them where towards our goal our mindset shift is your goal is not the sale your goal is the truth and trust of whether you can help them or not it's a different trajectory so when you shift your mindset you let go of your goal move them forward and you focus on being present with them to create a human connection with them around their problem, that creates this bubble of vulnerability with you where they feel comfortable opening up to you and building real trust. Real trust is when they feel comfortable telling you their truth. Real trust is when they feel comfortable telling you their truth. And that's what you got to, that's what you got to get to. And that's what that's I call what bottom of the iceberg. That's what you got to get to on every sales call you have. Otherwise you're skimming the top. Play what I call the numbers game. You know the numbers game concept? Yeah, I know the numbers game concept. The volume of velocity, dial for dollars. The more contacts you make, the more sales you're going to make. That's like so 1980s, man. We, we discovered it's not about how many contacts you make anymore. It's about how deep you go on each conversation. Not how many calls you make. A couple other classic ones. Remember this one? The, the, uh, the, the, the sales always lost at the end of the process. You know, you had a deal pending. It all looked good. Yeah. It just like fell through. You're like, what happened? It was like the perfect sale. We discovered in this economy now, the sales now lost anymore at the end of the process. It's now lost at the beginning of the process, at hello. And that's... That be, why is that though? Why is that? Because we think... Our job is to pull them from A to Z down our path as fast as possible because we think the sale's being made at the end. But what we don't realize is if you're not building trust with them in the beginning, the sale is lost right there. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example We're using our approach. Let's say you're having a first call with somebody over the phone, okay? Either inbound lady, whatever, referral. Great conversation, good chemistry, looks like a good fit, all of that they're interested, and the call kind of comes to a close after your first call. What do we normally say to someone at a call like that? We say in sales, we say things like, hey, how about we set up the call for another, like set up the next call, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been conditioned over the years to move things forward. Yeah. But what happens if you attempt to move someone forward and they aren't ready yet in the beginning? What do you break with them right there early on? Well, you're going to, you're going to, they're going to push back. They're going to not, they're not going to not, they're going to either, they're going to lie about jumping on the next call. Saying like, yeah, sure, whatever, because they, they feel pressure to do that. Um, and they'll either jump on it and then have no, and then ghost you after that, or they'll just, they'll just not show up to the next call. Correct. That's the cycle of pain begins right there. Because they feel pressure from you that breaks the trust. So same scenario, 
but our mindset and our languaging, okay? Calls going well, good chemistry, could be a fit, call comes to a close. Brian's saying, hey, how about we move forward? What we say instead is this. We say, where do you think we should go from here? Very, very, very clever. You just throw it back to them. You just always throw it back to them. You're letting them set their own pace. It's not about me. It's about them. And when you say to somebody, where do you think we should go from here? They're usually in a state of shock. They can't believe somebody in business actually ask them what they want to do. They're so used to being pulled down the process. They know a mile away. It's over right there. We're like, man, sales sucks. It's like so painful. It's so hard because you're so selling from the old conditioning that you believe the goal is the next step. That's not the goal. The goal is for them to say, for them to say to themselves, man, he just gets me. He understands my issue. I feel something about, just, you know, when you meet someone and they just totally get you, you're like, man, he just, yeah, yeah. that's what you, I got you, but you, whoever listened to this has to learn how to do it is a new skill set. You don't know it now because if you're still selling how we're talking about today, you're still in the old mindset. What other parts of the traditional sales cycle are broken? So I don't know if it's negotiation, if it's closing, if it's demo, like what else? And also like, what else do you work on? Like, are you, are you re redefining like the whole process? Is that your thing? Is that like what you're working on right now? And that's what you help clients with, or is there a certain thing you specialize in? I, is everything I, broken? I, I, <laughs> fundamentally, yes, but I specialize in one specific area and that is sales conversion only. Okay. How to convert the current leads that you have in one single conversation. No multiple steps, no follow-up, no next steps. It's called the one call sale system. I'm writing a book on that right now and I'm teaching this to my private clients and they're loving it. I set the bar for my private clients at a 100% conversion on every call if the person's qualified. If, well, if, explain that. Explain that though, because sure. like if there's other steps, there's like you have to have PO. If there's a PO issue, to, yeah, I don't mean like a signed and, contract. I mean a verbal. Yeah, we're gonna move forward. Okay. 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 On the first right. call, so, not so what, twenty call, steps later. Yeah, because like I'm just thinking like I'm tr I'm traditional enterprise B two B sales. Like yes, you have all your steps. You have all your steps mapped out. You know every step is next step in the buyer's journey. Like that's very normal. Um, so what is this one, one call close? This seems like it's, it, it's insane for somebody coming from an enterprise space to think like I could ever close a deal in one call. So how do you get through all those steps? Psychologically, you've built the trust and then how do you get them through to close? So that means you're hitting, you're hitting discovery, demo, negotiation and closing like there's all in. No, there's no, call. there's no demo. No, no. I'm just saying that, that you're, you're, I'm going through all the steps that I, I use. I know. <laughs> I know because you, those steps are steps we think we have to do to build trust. I'm throwing a bomb here and saying that all those long sales cycles, the reason for a long sales cycle is because of a lack of trust. If you had built, not you, but if, if you can build enough trust with some uh, a decision maker on our first conversation, there is no long sales cycle. The reason we're in those cycles right now is because we've messed it up early on. We did the whole relationship thing. We did a demo early on. We didn't, we were the doctor. We are the sales guy. Hence why we're now stuck in a long sales cycle chasing ghosts. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll just for fun, I'll, I'm going to ask your, your listeners and viewers right now to take a verbal oath with me uh, to not a legal one, verbal one, to remove one key phrase forever from the vocabulary as of this recording and never use it ever again in the world of sales. Now, this might hurt just a bit. Uh, for those folks who've been in sales for a long time, is that all right? Yeah, let's do it. I, I, I love it. I love it. Listen, if it works, I don't think anyone's going to push back. You just got to challenge people. They got to, for anybody who's listening to this, like a lot of stuff that you, you know, that Ari's talking about, it's, 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 some of it makes sense. Like immediately, like the, like the fact that you're, you, you know, you're going like with your five whys and, and getting people to open up and you're not just taking surface level uh, information and you're, and you're pushing them into it uh, almost like an uncomfortable, uh, but very, um, like candid conversation about the pain points. I think that's very important. 
I think that this this one call closed to me. Like, if if somebody can try it out, and I'm going to try it out, I'm going to try some of these steps. Probably read more into the book and see if I can do it with some of my clients. Um, it's it's an uncomfortable thing to think about because obviously, if, ever, if you ever done large ticket deals, um, this is something that has never been discussed ever. It's not something that is normally ever taught in any sales book ever. The one call anything. I can see it for a smaller deal. That's pretty standard, but for larger, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I got to try it out. But the point is, if you don't try it out, you never know. So I am a firm believer in experimenting and trying different things. So if you have one, if you have one line that you think that everybody should get rid of right away, like, let's do it. Let's try it. Let's see what the results are. I'm just a data guy. Like if it works, it works. I'm fine. All right, here it is. I'm going to ask everyone to never again use this phrase after this recording for the rest of their lives. And here it is. Never again use the phrase follow up ever again in your sales career. <laughs> all right. And I, if, I, if I had them all in a room and asked them to raise their hand, how many of you used the word follow up in the last few weeks? I have every hand going up. Who's written an email? Hi, right, I'm writing you to follow up. Hi, I'm calling a follow up. What's the only industry in the world that use the word follow up? Sales. Sales. Hi, I'm just calling a follow up. But I don't know how it's like you're killing your own sale. They're associating you with the negative sales versus stereotype. Because follow up says I'm trying to move things where? Forward towards my goal. This is the commission, my sale. You're losing the sale right there. There's a few more classic ones from the 80s. Remember those classic ones? I'm giving you a call to touch base. Touch base, follow up. Um, Checking yeah. in. Like what are next steps? Like, oh my God, it's so eighties, and we're so stuck in that old conditioning with that old languaging, which kills the trust. Here's what you say instead. This goes right for our materials. You say, "I'm just giving you a call to see if you have any feedback from our previous conversation, any feedback from our last meeting, any feedback from proposal." See, feedback's not going forward; it's going where? Backwards, away. From the sale, when you move forward, you create momentum. When you create momentum, you put pressure on them. When you put pressure on them, you're chasing a ghost, playing the numbers game. And if you want to live in that world and chase that painful situation, all the power to you. But there'll be certain people on this call who go, holy crap, where was RE20 years ago, 10 years ago? Why am I still stuck and playing the numbers game when I could just shift the whole thing and play in a lower volume, higher conversion rate model and not chasing ghosts anymore. And it's totally doable. I'm doing it right now with my private clients and they're, they're kicking ass. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this valuable, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you want to dive deeper into this conversation, check out the links in the description to watch the full episode. See you in the next one. <laughs>